point five. The media played an important role in putting fear in everyone's mind. So, what is the solution? Here, our psychologists can play a vital role. They can train volunteers, and these volunteers can take seminars, educate people more on this topic, depression. Remember, the more you fear from this virus, the more this virus will affect you, not physically but mentally. Thank you for lending me your ears. Thank you, contestant number one. We have contestant number two. Only a crisis, actual or perceived, produces real change. In human history, nothing has destroyed and killed more human beings than nanoviruses. The coronavirus was declared as a pandemic by WHO on 11th March 2020. This pandemic has led to a global economic carnage. Good morning, teachers and my dear friends. Today, let us not discuss about the virus solely, but the lessons we learn from it to strengthen our future. From Spanish flu to Ebola and now COVID-19. My friends, it's belatedly the moment to take measures. Can we still afford to be careless? In any given situation, an individual should learn to survive and adapt to its surroundings. Instead of chanting mantras and clanging metals, a health sector needs a meticulous approach. Future healthcare systems should be more prepared to battle pandemics. We need to set early warning systems in place in the society. In case of COVID-19, that did not happen. Social distancing should become a norm. We have to evolve a mechanism for hygiene and cleanliness. The urge should come from within the people. Around 50% students do not have access to the internet and lack devices. The government needs to have a systematic approach to address these issues. The pandemic has taught us not to succumb to our fears and keep panic away. Don't forget that every crisis is an opportunity to rectify the causes and improve the responses. The virus has offered us a chance to rethink the doomsday machine we have built ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, contestant number two. We have contestant number three. Honorable judges, teachers, and my dear friends, today I am present here to speak on the topic pandemic crisis lessons for the future. Lacks of due to COVID pandemic, lacks of people lost their lives. Millions became jobless, and the world seems to be stopped. But wait, let's see the other side of the coin. Previously, we were chasing money and property, right? But now, your money may not protect you from this virus, but your immunity will surely save you from it. Similarly, at the start, the schools were closed. The whole education process came to halt. But online learning proved to be an effective solution for distance learning. On the other hand, the residents of Jalandhar could view the Himalayan range after 30 long years. Isn't life amazing when the nature is fear pollution? We learned that human beings are tenants on earth and the nature is the real owner of it. We only heard about the concept of self-reliance before, but now we experienced its significance. At the start, the whole cotton industry collapsed, but a new alternative for it was explored. Local Indian industries started producing PP kits and now India is the second largest PP kit producer in the world. However, what if a COVID such pandemic arises again in future? World is. No, we don't want it to happen, but it is as important to take actions and learn from small lessons now to be prepared for future. Thank you. Thank you, contestant number three. We have contestant number four. Dalai Lama once said, we are the only species with the power to protect the earth and also destroy it. 
गुड मॉर्निंग रिस्पेक्टेड जजेस आई एम कंटेस्टेंट नंबर फोर कोरोना एज इज द कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ अ प्रॉब्लमैटिक रिलेशनशिप विथ नेचर एंड आ ग्रीड इट फोर्सेज अस टू बी प्रिपेयर फॉर फ्यूचर वर्ल्ड हैज टू चूज बिटवीन वेपन्स और ह्यूमन्स ग्लोबल सोलिडारिटी इज द बैक बोन टू फाइट पैंडमिक क्राइसिस विच नेशन शुड कम अहेड एंड हेल्प पुअर नेशन building a resilient healthcare infrastructure which is equally available to everyone is important india is becoming a agriculture and pharmaceutical giant and also helping other nation with adequate supply of food and medicine biomedical waste management is essential and empowering this sector is must strong education infrastructure is necessary so that good quality of education reach, reach remote areas ideal village model need to be prepared including proper facilities young brain should develop models electronic gadgets internet apps big companies too should come ahead and help small local business promoting vocal for local we should develop art of living by exercising yoga meditation and develop our physical and mental health i am very happy to tell that my father got covid warrior award as being a part of shamik special management committee building scientific temper is important and it is our right that we should follow it under the leadership of a eminent leader and our healthcare minister dr harshvardhan our recovery rate is the highest KK Shailaja's Kerala model has helped us to flatten the corona graph above all public awareness and population explosion is the root cause that needs to be addressed thank you all frontline workers salute to them thank you thank you contestant number 4 we have contestant number 5 yes miss Good morning, dear teachers and my dear friends. I am contestant number five. Today, I'm going to talk about the lessons for the future that this pandemic has taught us. We are currently in the midst of a worldwide trial that has changed our lives beyond recognition. It is a challenge on the global level for the G20, the World Health Organization, and other international bodies, since the coronavirus does not respect national boundaries. it is just as much a challenge on the national level the many of the policy decisions in response to the pandemic are made and at the local levels where people decide on whether to comply with government guidelines and whether to support one another in times of need every one of us from heads of state to ordinary citizens to refugees bears great responsibility for the health and well-being of others covid-19 pandemic requires us to listen to experts to unite behind science and not play politics with people's lives this means responding to the challenge at the appropriate scale and treating a crisis like a crisis with the urgency that's needed we are brought face to face with the most basic questions of life what are we here for what have we done with our lives what do we yet wish to do if given the opportunity who is truly important on our lives what is it that we truly cherish the pandemic leads us to some painful insights if we know who is truly important to us and what we truly cherish then why have we spent so little of our lives pursuing these things climate change and covid-19 are two very different challenges but they do have some key things in common both are global they do not respect national boundaries and both require countries to work together to find solutions the global community has shown that it can act to address a crisis with governments businesses and individuals taking measures and changing behaviors in response to the pandemic when we work together even small personal actions when when put together like physical distancing can make a big difference helping us to overcome huge challenges thank you thank you contestant number 5 we have contestant number 6 john f kennedy has said When written in Chinese, the word crisis is composed of two characters. One represents danger, 
and the other represents opportunity. Good morning, everyone. Today, let us all give a thought to the lessons learned and the opportunities gained from the COVID-19 pandemic. Lessons learned is a rather overused and perhaps trite phrase. Now is the time to look ahead and plan for the future while living through a pandemic. This is presently a necessity. Although the disease was first detected in China, it has traveled to every continent, respecting no geographical boundaries, along with exponential curves racing to the 30 million confirmed cases worldwide. Lessons from the past were ignored. It is a century since the Spanish influenza that claimed the lives of more than 50 million. COVID-19 is not the world's last pandemic, and we have to learn what we have missed and how to avoid the failures. From wearing surgical masks to social distancing, closing schools, religious places, theaters, and encouraging people to stay home and to stay safe. These appear to be among the most effective measures if applied early. Complexity and uncertainty need to be embedded in our educational systems, which is now online, so that future generations can understand the world as it is, complex, dynamic, and uncertain. In these highly uncertain times, the need for reassurance can take the form of autocratic leaders rising across the world, such as Kerala's health minister, K.K. Shailaja, who was honored by the UN for her strategies adopted to curb COVID-19 transmission. As the philosophers say, life must be understood backwards. However, they forget the other proposition that it must be lived forward. We need each other more than ever with compassion, solidarity, and collaboration. With less despair and a more concerted, focused scientific action, we will emerge victorious over COVID-19 eventually. A global pandemic requires global efforts. Thank you. Thank you, contestant number six. We have next contestant, contestant number seven. <clears throat> Good morning, judges, teachers, and my dear friends. The coronavirus pandemic is a defining global health crisis of our time. Every day, people are losing jobs and income with no way of knowing when normality will return. Nations like USA, a superpower, can't even fight this pandemic, whereas a small country like New Zealand has successfully defeated the crisis. Frontline workers have relinquished and exhausted themselves, physically and mentally, just to protect our lives. We need to have an altruistic outlook like them. Technology was considered as a cursed humanity, but in these hard times, it has been proven to be a boon in preserving our sanity and helping us stay connected with our family and friends and recommencing education while self-isolating too. The lessons that should take forward for the future are healthcare system should be war prepared to battle pandemics whenever they break out. Also need to critically look at a healthcare ecosystem, especially the critical care centers. Hence, when a pandemic strikes, there should be an action plan which can be implemented in the short of this time frame, we also need to set early warning systems in place in the society. Unlike in the past, viruses in the 21st century not only are hyperactive, but also leave their tales of devastation with viral speed. This is because of globalization. We cannot stop globalization with countries interconnected by air. But when an unknown virus breaks its barriers and jumps to humans, there should be warning bells early enough. Social distancing should become a normal part of our regular habits. When a new virus comes knocking, there should be self-imposed social distancing to break the chain. Children and families are trying their best to keep learning. We are privileged enough to have technology, whereas a lot of people in our country can't even fathom to think about it. The bottom line is that India has to have a robust action plan when a pandemic strikes, a plan that is creative, disciplined, and above all, sensitive. Thank you. Thank you, contestant number seven. We have a last contestant, contestant number eight. 
Good morning, one and all. I'm contestant number eight, and I'm here to speak on the pandemic crisis. A quote by Helen Keller: "Optimism is the faith that leads to achievement. Nothing can be done without hope and confidence." Today, the world is facing the COVID-19 crisis, a pandemic that has changed life for millions of people. For the first time in history, a health crisis has shut down the entire global economy. painfully demonstrating how inseparable healthcare and economy have become senior citizens children and people with chronic diseases are more vulnerable to this virus this is also a crucial time for education sector board and university exams entrance and competitive exams are all put to a halt to combat the situation schools and colleges have adapted to online learning which has its own challenges for both the teacher and the student the working class is the most affected due to the pandemic with loss of job lack of employment minimum wages and cut in salary here comes a question to my mind what is the plan of action till the vaccine comes how do the poor grapple with the situation and how do we safeguard the safety of the people we must learn from the historic spanish flu not to repeat the same mistakes again by not wearing mask stepping out unnecessarily and social distancing prevention is better than cure the same however we have reached a stage the cure is inevitable and prevention is definitely a must in times like this hope can be a powerful source of reassurance many others who are working to prevent the virus also need the reassurance uh, the assurance and the hope that we shall overcome this soon thank you thank you contestant number 8 well uh yes thanking all you dear boys for your excellent presentation and i'd also like to congratulate all of you for this bold step it takes a lot of courage to first prepare a speech and then execute it well so you've done a wonderful job and made us proud uh yes and i'm sure uh, that all of you are dear our contestants would love to hear uh, you dear judges uh, and i'd like to invite um, our judge Ms. mrs beatrice pinto to address our boys good morning good morning my dear boys teachers it's nice to be back with you after a long time uh let me begin by thanking you all for inviting me to this very impressive uh competition uh rather this is your kala utsav something we always enjoyed together uh one thing a very strong observation or rather very strong thought that prevailed in my mind right through the entire competition was this one phrase which kept and keeps resonating every time nothing stops don bosco covid virus nothing nothing ever stops and new boys and teachers along with the backing of your management have proved it time and again the school is functioning as if no covid exists right okay um i must say a lot of effort has been put in on everybody's part okay i'll begin with you my boys for having taken the initiative in spite of being at home um, the pieces were very very beautiful in fact again a lot of knowledge sitting in front of you and uh, watching you all as you uh, delivered your speeches which were really good well prepared must say lot of effort gone in from your side your parents side your teachers side and all those who support you always uh, i must congratulate the teachers for their choice of topics very very down to earth something very nice something new and uh, it was good the boys also took a lot of trouble to get good pieces done so to cut short a long uh, list of things that i would like to tell you 
is you have done an, an excellent job and you need to clap for yourself god bless have a great day ahead thank, thank you miss thank you miss yatris for your wonderful words um <clears throat> well yes so um as we come to a closure of this meaningful event i'd like to take this opportunity to thank our dear reven father principal uh, the members of the management uh, and also the teachers in charge um, <clears throat> the, ch the teachers who are a part of the committee for this successful and a very systematic program uh, i'd also like to thank our wonderful judges uh for uh, giving in your precious time spending it your uh, hope you'll had a wonderful uh, time you with us uh yes how can i forget the contestants it said a speaker should approach his presentation not by what he wants to say but by what he wants to learn and yours thanking our contestant for making this event a success mm, thank you dear boys thank you dear teachers you have a nice day uh miss jansi are you here with us yes miss ah uh, yes miss uh, the judges will have to given their uh, results uh, pass the pass the results to you uh, one judge has already passed in now the other two okay okay 